It should have been a time of celebration. But for the island of Sri Lanka, 1996 was a time of vastly conflicting emotions. To be given the chance to co-host the Cricket World Cup was the greatest honour. And yet security concerns around the civil war meant Australia and the West Indies refused to travel. Those teams who did go were afforded the deepest gratitude. The hand which was lended to Sri Lanka from those two countries which we or myself will never forget. These were unhappy times for a nation who projects only happiness and joy in defiance of difficult economic circumstances. But come 96, it was time for the smiles to be replaced by a more serious approach. Go out there, give your best shot, hit hard, don't allow them to uh, control you. And that's the attitude we adopt in the tournament prior to the World Cup as well. Arjuna Ranatunga was something new for Sri Lanka, an abrasive captain. He was a lucky one too, being able to call on one of the finest talents of that era, Aravinda da Silva, whose early form in that competition suggested a man at the height of his powers. The forfeited games meant that Sri Lanka would progress to the last eight regardless. For India, staging the tournament increased their prospects, but with it, levels of expectation. Indian people are known to, you know, create that energy inside the stadium. There and back to side to, to an extent where you know it starts playing on the opposition's minds and then and, and, you know uh, so, so that kind of support is what uh, we experienced. No team was able to tap into that atmosphere, be inspired by it, quite like Australia. Mark Watt, the top of the order, it was a particularly good one day play but we had depth all the way down so I think we were a pretty solid uh, one day cricket side. Mark Waugh would go on to make 300s in the tournament and although India would lose that group game, Tendulkar was displaying a purity of technique, that fondness for the spotlight. Yet both were overshadowed by South Africa's Gary Kirsten, albeit against first-timers the UAE. His 188 remains the highest score in World Cup history. As it worked out in that particular innings, I, stopped, I got off to a, a, a pretty fast start and I had some fun out there, played nice and aggressively and uh, things just kept working out. The United Arab Emirates batsman found the pitch a little less benign. Sultan Zarawani lived to tell the tale. Sri Lanka had found themselves in the quarter-finals before playing a single match. They would face an England side with very modest form and somewhat misguided confidence. The amazing thing about that is that we were all in a room going, we caught Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka in the quarters. And uh, we played them and they absolutely were unbelievable. 92 had seen explosive, high-risk batting at the top of the order. But this was truly the year of the pinch hitter. And nobody did that better than Sanath Jayasuriya. 82 off 44 balls was close to revolutionary in one-day terms. A testament to the vision of Ranatunga and coach Tav Watmore. Jayasuriya. Beautifully played. Superbly played. The key thing uh, was uh, them to ask for me to open and I think it was very successful and, and also at the same time um, when, when I got that opportunity I thought to myself I never opened in my, uh, in my career so it's the first time I've been opening for uh, cricket. And what a menace this man is. He was scared like if he opens and fails whether he will be out of the national side. I said don't worry I'll protect you. I'm giving you that guarantee. You just go and open. He battered us, you know, that, that was the thing. And if you thought you'd bowled a good length ball, it would still go, disappear out of the park. Well, if your good balls are going uh, for four or six, what's going to happen to your bad balls? What awaited Sri Lanka in their semi-final with India was unlike anything they'd witnessed before. When we drove into the grounds, we saw almost 100,000 people outside the ground um, trying to get in. And uh, when there was almost 109,000 inside, so when we were two wickets down, I, uh, the challenge and the atmosphere really brought the best out of me. Got. 
After two wickets fell in the first over, De Silva had to trust his instincts. In those surroundings, and faced with such adversity, his 66 off 47 balls was an innings of staggering fortitude. Take that. What a beautiful shot. I was very lucky that I could play cricket with him, not against him, because he was one of the best batsmen I have ever come across. With India chasing 252 to win, and with Tendulkar flying, a moment of self-doubt for Sri Lanka. Till that particular moment, the wicket looked perfect when Sachin was batting. It looked a perfect batting track. As soon as Sachin got out, then it started turning, jumping. That's, that's the way it happens uh, when, when a good player plays. On bad track, still, the track looks pretty good. An Indian collapse of seven wickets for 22 runs enraged the home support. Amid ugly scenes, the match was abandoned. Uh, sensational stuff. This game is going to have to be awarded to uh, the Sri Lankans. Sri Lanka winning by default. There followed a period of deep sadness and reflection for the Indian public. To lose in such a manner was a grievous experience. But after darkness came light. The semi-final against the West Indies was, was just a great game of cricket. We were never really in it. Australia were indebted to a partnership of 138 between Stuart Law and Michael Bevan. We then scrapped and scrounged our way to just over 200, which was never really enough. And, then, and they were cruising. But the West Indies would lose 8 for 37 in just 50 balls. Like always, most bowlers should attack the stumps. You know, those three wooden things down the end are sort of a bit of a clue that you should bowl at them. Ah! Oh, big appeal there for LBW. He's got him. He's given that LBW. Warner struck again. They just started to lose wickets uh, just when they didn't need them, and it just gave us enough belief. Well, there, the is up on that. Fleming is bowling out. This is a sensational victory to Australia. They look gone for all money. In the end, I said, I don't think we were ever in front in the game until probably the very last ball of the game. That meant a final meeting with co-host Sri Lanka, for whom the tournament had begun mired in politics and conflict. The country's former name, Serendip, the ability to make happy and unexpected discoveries by accident. Any sense of spirituality was being helped along by the captain, and his taste for extra spice. Someone asked me about two war brothers. I said they are good cricketers, but they are highly overrated. Look, Arjuna was one of those niggly characters. He tried to get under the skin of the opposition and generally did. Then uh, Shane, when I said that he's a mediocre bowler. 700 test wickets, not bad for an average bloke. When I walked into the middle, some of the comments made by the Australian cricketers, I knew that if it has affected them. Taylor would lead the way with 74 vital runs in damp conditions. To keep them down to 241 was uh, a very good effort. Uh, but the only way we were able to do it was to get some wickets and we, we turned the screws on them. Aravinda de Silva would once again be the game's decisive contributor. His three wickets keeping the Australians to below 250. Starting a job that he would later finish. And he's bowling a little bit of turn there, so Aravinda de Silva doing exactly the job that his captain brought him on for. Get some wickets. Aravinda de Silva basically changed that course of the game. He played a wonderful innings. We dropped him a few times early, but um, he played a wonderful innings. For me, that gave me that much more pleasure because uh, it was in a World Cup final and also beating Australia. It is something which will cherish me for the rest of my life. This time, the pinch-hitting tactics had failed. But in terms of technique and control of the mind, this was an innings of real distinction. 
he's hit that one through the field as well. That's a magnificent shot by Aravinder again. He's playing a little blind ribbon innings. The important part was ultimately the two guys who really struggled, like Arvind and myself, for maybe 15, 16, 17 years, who really struggled to get cricket into this level, could finish the World Cup. I could hit the last run, Arvind could see from the other side. That's it, all the way to the boundary for four. What a victory for the Sri Lankans. The captain and his deputy, only the third man to score a hundred in a World Cup final, leading the celebrations. A nation rejoiced and for once indulged itself, congratulated itself on progress made. The achievements of those individuals would set the benchmark and create a legacy for Sri Lankan cricket which will never be forgotten.